Good morning. <clears throat> not as bad as yesterday morning, but not good. <laughs> Love to know when good will be. So it's the 30th of January. Full moon day. Night. It was pretty full last night. I wanted to talk about my mornings. It's been going on for years and it's continued to get worse and worse and worse. And I don't know what I can do about it or how to change it. And am I doing this to myself? But this is my, my typical waking up four o'clock in the morning five at the latest and I'm done there's no going back to sleep there's no dozing there's nothing after that because I have this burning sensation kind of electrical feeling it starts in my gut and just kind of you know moves through my body and then I feel my heart racing and I just it's it's a it's adrenaline it's cortisol just rushing through my body and you can just literally feel it seeping And then I lay there and I obsess. And then my head starts getting woozy and dizzy and off balanced and weird. And anxiety gets really, really tough. This is my morning every single morning every single morning I don't wake up and just lay there never <laughs> oh no. if my husband only knew what I was the torture I was going through when laying right next to him I actually put a pillow between us and set it up on its side because I don't want you know to disturb him with my moving around and tossing and turning and whatever I do <clears throat> Is this psychological? Is this me crazy? Or is this something to do with chronic neurological Lyme? I don't know. I just know that it's truly not normal. And no matter how much I try to go in my head, I'm not going to pay attention to this. I'm going to ignore it. Yeah, right. Ignore it. That's going to happen. So, um, just want to talk about how my mornings are. That doesn't include the day, during the day, how. Maybe it's the clonopin that keeps the anxiety down to uh, a roar, because I'll take the I'll take the clonopin around six forty-five, seven o'clock, and then it's the goofy, horrible head pain that I keep getting over here on the side. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, just started taking coconut oil. I was supposed to be doing it for a while, but I didn't have the liquid. And I'm sorry, but I'm not taking a chunk of coconut oil in my mouth. So my husband got me the liquid, and I just took it this morning. Ill. I don't mind it in cooking and stuff, but to just take a tablespoon of it right off the out of the bottle is kind of nasty. But just adding to my regimen of stuff. So I slept okay. I woke up with a lot of, uh, during the night several times, this happens a lot with the pain in my hip, pain in my lower back. I have to readjust, put a pillow between my legs, turn on another side. Um, you know, I usually 
I've told you I stay on my left side, it, you know, just trying to get comfortable. So, uh, Jen, I feel so bad for you that you can't get comfortable in your brand new bed. Ugh, how frustrating is that for you? Got these new bumps right here. That I keep trying to just pick off. I don't know what those are. Just facial bumps, but they bother me because every time I go like this, I can feel them and I want to pick at them. So that's my morning. I'm not comatose feeling. I shouldn't use that word because I wouldn't even know what comatose is. Stroke-like feeling this morning like it was yesterday, but it's still bad. And it's snowing. We're supposed to do it about three inches. It's freezing. It's miserable out. Hate this weather. Checking with you later. Got a full day of nothing. Big full day of nothing. Hi. Um, just finished the treadmill. So, wiping down the sweat. And, uh, mm, mm, trying to catch my breath. Just wanted to pop in and say that mm, I did the treadmill. And, of course, my gut is never going to be okay. Ugh. My head's just baseline. I wish I had something else to add. I just, I don't. My gut is hurting. I feel this completely wiped out. Even before I got on the treadmill, I just feel wiped out. And, um,. No pattern to this. So, I'll check in later. I'm gonna watch a couple people's vlogs and that's about it. That's about it. Oh. Bye. Hi again. Nothing to report. Not doing anything. I'm bored. It's snowing. And I have nothing to do. Try to put together a little art project in preparation for if I do. It's my granddaughter at all this weekend. I know um, it's Super Bowl Sunday. And my younger daughter, who's a huge Eagles fan, huge, um, is hosting a Super Bowl party at her house, her and her husband. So I'm sure, my, I guess my husband is going to go over there. I clearly would not. A, I don't watch football, and B, really? This, this is going to a party? Yeah. That would be fun. Um, so maybe that will be the day I'll take her is on Sunday for a couple hours. I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I say that every single day. Just um, maybe it's the full moon making things worse I don't know again I feel like I could just lay down and sleep but I can't I was gonna increase my vitamin B today um, and then I thought against it because I just started the amoxicillin yesterday 
Now I can't start, and I know it sounds stupid because it's just vitamin B, but it's a it's a special vitamin B complex that methylated, and again, I'm only taking one out of six that I'm supposed to be taking a day. So I was just gonna increase to two. Um, but I just thought maybe I should wait until I've gotten back completely on the antibiotics again. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I just, my neck is, it, the, the pain is, is so generated in that, this little area now. And I haven't been putting heat on it recently as much as I had been. Because I read or was told, I don't remember, that that's not something you should be doing for swollen lymph nodes. You're putting heat on it constantly. And when I thought it was muscular or skeletal, I just kept putting heat on it. Um, so... quite lonely here in the middle of the winter when my husband's gone off to work and I can't go outside. The days are really long. And I can't just lay down. I just, I, it's, it's not me. Believe me, I'm sick enough to be laying down. And I will go lay down like in an hour. I mean, lay down, I'll go get up on my bed and I'll read. I'll journal. I journal every day. I try to journal. Now that I've been vlogging, I haven't been journal. I used to journal every single day. And now that I vlog, I haven't been doing that as much. Um, But I'll try to journal and... So that's what I did. I did a little art project with the perler beads. And if you don't know what perler beads are, Google it. They've been around for pff, since my kids were little, probably even before that. And uh, they're still a great, I mean, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of finger dexterity. And it's, so it's a, it's, a, it's a good art project to keep somebody, a kid, uh, occupied for a while. No. That being said, my granddaughter doesn't do too well at it. My grand, my oldest grandson, he's great. He loves that kind of stuff. But my granddaughter, she loses interest pretty quickly. But I tried to, I made a little doggy on a skateboard to show her what she could. I mean, you can make a billion different things. And I used to glue magnets on the back of them and so the kids could put them up on their on the refrigerator, but you can make them into keychains, you can make them into necklace, you can make them into, you can do anything with it. But anyway, that's what I did. And I'm thinking if anyone saw me there, I'm sitting at my kids, grandkids little table and they're little sitting in the little chair doing perler beads all by myself. <laughs> How sad my life has become. If you told me Five years ago, that's what I'd be doing. I would have laughed in your face. I was a f working as a nurse on a medical surgical floor. I had humongous responsibility. I would be given up to nine patients a shift. I worked the second shift. Um, I did the 3 to 11.30. Loved that shift. Loved it. just had a full life so if you told me five years ago that I'd be sitting at this little kid's table sitting in a little kid's chair putting together perler beads all by myself in the middle of the day I would have thought you're smoking crack because that ain't never gonna happen and yet here I am never say never right never say never
my friend and I were discussing the Lord again and uh, she made some comment about she thinks her walk with the Lord would be much stronger if she would get a healing if she could feel better she'd be able to and you know I I completely agree with her completely hold on my glasses are dirty again um, but that's not what the Bible teaches us as far as God always knows what's better for us than we do and so you know of course I think if I felt better and I wasn't sick, I could go to church. Um, I could worship you. I could witness for you. But I'm sick, so I don't. Somebody on uh, Facebook, as a matter of fact, in the Lyme support group, Christian Lyme support group, wrote a, a post just yesterday, I think it was, or the day before, I don't know, asking if anyone else has can't get to church because being in church causes them to be dizzy and lightheaded and the stimuli is way too much for them and, and I was I was really chagrined at how many people responded that no they they can't get to church and when they do try it's it's misery so yeah I was chagrined by it but I also was like I'm not alone and so I put I wrote in there you know I used to be able to go to Saturday night services when our church had Saturday evening services because um, it was such a smaller group and the music, you know, it wasn't the full music up there. It was maybe a couple people strumming on a guitar. and So it was quieter, smaller group, less stimuli. And even though sometimes I would feel like I was rocking and bobbing really, really bad, I still could make it. But since they stopped which was back in May, since they stopped their church, their Saturday evening services, I haven't been able to go. And it's like, that's what you'd want, Lord? And so, of course, you know, somebody says, well, you just push yourself, you just go. Mm -hmm. I push myself to go to a store, and it's most of the time ends up being a horror story. And that's without me having to talk to people and greet people and listen and sit still for, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and all of that. I said, to, to what end do you push yourself to go to church just so you have made an appearance? Would I be able to actually listen to the sermon? Would I actually be able to absorb what was being said? Would I actually be blessed If I go by history, no. Am I not trusting God? Well, I, I did. I have gone to church on the Saturday evening services, and like I said, there was times that it was really difficult to do that. But I went every Saturday evening. I never missed a Saturday evening. And then they had to stop the services because it was just too small of a turnout. I guess me showing up wasn't enough for them to turn on the lights and heat the place, right? And I've mentioned a couple of times that my daughter's church has a Saturday evening service and I've yet to get over there because I've been so I've been sicker. So, that's what I've been doing. Playing with the kids' perler beads and sitting and nothing much else. wish I had the energy to like go clean out a closet or I don't know I, my house, I don't know what else I would do I don't want to go in the sauna I have no desire to go in the sauna because I'm hoping to get in the Epsom salt bath tonight and by the way maybe I can put it in here later I'll have my dogs howling for you because uh, I don't know about you all but the moon definitely affects me. I end up not being able to sleep at all for several days, and I'm very agitated and more dizzy and more anxious. I just feel I, I feel like it, it's worse. With and I don't think it's my imagination. Anyways, later. Lola.
That's for you, Blue Moon. Hi. Um, just going to sign off. Nothing to report. I'm really um, a little annoyed with the, the lab that I went through because i glad I made the decision to call the lab. And they said, well, no, we sent everything over on the 22nd, which is the day that they drew the blood. And the stool sample was the next day on the 23rd. I said, no, you know, you couldn't have sent anything on the 22nd because that was the day you drew the blood. Well, that's what's written here, that everything was sent to your doctor on the 22nd. I'm like, wow. Okay, well, all they got was the stool sample. Okay, well, I can try to fa I'll fax it over again right now. Um, I hope I have the right fax number. And I go, well, you must have because they got the stool sample. So that's what you get for going to some no-name lab. And I only went to the stupid no-name lab because they would draw the blood and then let me drop off the stool sample the next day. Whereas LabCorp will not let you do that. LabCorp, you must do everything all at once. Anyway, so hopefully the doctor got the facts today. Hopefully she'll take a look at it in the next 48 hours. And hopefully then I'll have the results of that and we can move on because I'm... Very impatient. I have no patience. But anyway, I'm going to sign off because I've done nothing all day. I haven't felt exceptionally bad. My head has not been really bad. Praise God. Um, but my neck kills and I feel very tired and weak. But um, as far as the woozy, wacky head... Um, not the case. So, yeah, I'll take anything. I'll take anything over the woozy, wacky head. I'm telling you, I can't stand that. I'm getting a little bit of a headache, but it's probably from sitting and staring at the four walls all day. So, Lord willing, I might be back tomorrow if I don't have anything to really, you know, video. I mean, if there's, I don't see the point in doing this if I have nothing to share other than, oh, here I am. Feel like crap. Oh, it's another day. Feel like crap. I mean, I just I don't see the point of doing that. So unless there's something to really share, I might see you tomorrow and might not. Bye.